This podcast is part of E2C Network, where we share the whole Auburn experience. Hey, Auburn fans, welcome to No Huddle, your source for Auburn football news and discussion, part of the E2C Network. I'm Major Richardson. I'm also here with my buddy, Jared Davis. Jared, it has been quite a few really crazy weeks since we last talked. Uh, you know, the holidays, obviously, but Auburn football and Hugh Freeze have been going off in a very good way with this National Signing Day. I'm calling it the National Signing Day. I know it's still, quote-unquote, early National Signing Day, whatever. I think it's National Signing Day, considering we signed most of the guys that we're targeting in this early, early signing day. Jared, how are you doing, and uh, how are you feeling about this National Signing Day uh, that we just had? Uh, I'm doing good, man. Uh, I hope you and your family had a good Christmas. Yeah, we did. Awesome. Yeah, so it's been a couple of weeks since we talked, and a lot of has happened. I mean, I think, um, you know, last time we talked, we were probably in the 40s or 50s recruiting <laughs> yeah. class-wise. And uh, I think that, uh, I don't know, so, some groups have us at 19. I think the consensus overall is around 16. Um, so I'd say that was that's a big change since the last time we talked, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, and I think the highest that – at the end of Harson's era was around 55 to 60, somewhere around there in recruiting. And for us to even get inside the top 20, I mean, I thought it was possible just thinking about Auburn being a potential contender, you know, later down the road, probably not this next year in the national championship kind of playoff field, but down the road, I mean, we have the history to do it. And so I think that definitely helps. And then you kind of factor in, Hugh Freeze. Yeah, Hugh Freeze and his staff, especially you know, the way Hugh Freeze has won at different schools, I think has kind of shown he is a winner. And being a winner attracts other winners, you know, better players, better recruits. And so as you're seeing more players getting, you know, picked up by Auburn, I think that that can be one of those chain reactions of you know, uh, you see one of the great four-star players come to Auburn, and then another four-star says, "Hey, I'm committed to a big, big school. I, I might consider playing at Auburn because you know what? That big school didn't say I was going to start this first year, but Auburn said I could. And so you, you kind of, you know, open your eye, your mind to that that possibility. And sure enough, I mean, one of the big storylines was Auburn flipping recruits. And let me just go through a few of these, and Jared. Kind of give me your reactions to some of these names or names of schools that we we flip guys from: Ohio State, Miami, FSU, LSU, Ole Miss, Arkansas, Tennessee, Michigan State, Texas Tech. These these are not small small schools by any means. I mean, you're considering you know Ohio State, who's about to play in the playoffs. You know, teams like LSU had who had just made this huge turnaround. Always get great recruits. What's kind of your thoughts on on how we were able to flip that many guys in such a short period of time, considering really in the last three weeks, right before National Signing Day? Yeah, I think we probably lose sight of a, how amazing that is. I, I you know, because we see our as everything we see our rivals, you know, top two and three in recruiting, one and two, whatnot. And so we like, you know, we the excitement was good for a moment, and then we forget about it. And I, I think we got to remember that that is that's amazing what you just said because, like you said, we're not flipping from you know small schools, right? I mean, we're flipping mm-hmm. Ohio State, and not you know we flipped some kids in the past. Harson had Harson got the Alabama flip last year, and everybody said, well, quietly Alabama had kind of backed off him, anyways. Um, and I don't know if that's true or not, but th- this was not like FSU wanted Kedrick Falk, mm-hmm. Ohio State wanted is it Kyan Lee? Yes, they, uh, yeah, like they wanted those guys. Uh, Miami, I heard somebody say, um, uh, I, like Mario Cristobal thought very highly of Connor Liu. Yeah, um, you know, Connor Liu is one of these. I think one group has him as a four star, most have him as a three. But everybody talks about just the crazy football IQ this guy has. And really, it's just about putting a little bit more weight on. I mean, there's people talking about he could be the starting center next year. That's how smart he is in football. <laughs> wow. So, I I don't know. It's it's like twofold, right? It's like, that's amazing they were able to do that. 
And then you're thinking, what was the other coaching staff doing? These guys came in and did this in three weeks. Right. Like, how is the other coaching staff? I, it's, well, one th- it's one thing to go from 20 to 16. Yeah. We were in the 40s. Yeah. And, and yeah, I don't know. And I, I'm sure there was some element of, you know, the there were some people holding off, you know, committing to Auburn because they, they saw what was coming with Harson. He was going to get fired. <laughs> And so there maybe maybe we're waiting. I get some of that, but you don't get that big of a bump just by kind of playing it as is. You're making that effort to change players' minds. And that's hard to do just in general. <laughs> but that's hard to do in such a short period of time. And, and not to, you know, factor well, you gotta factor in also, you know, Hugh Freeze was only hired what, three weeks ago or so? But that doesn't even take take into account the other coaches that have been hired, the assistant coaches, the defensive coordinator, the offensive coordinator. Those positions were kind of hired in the last few days, really. And so that's that's kind of you, you didn't have your full staff <laughs> from day one because you were hiring it. And so the matter, uh, well, the 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 fact is they they brought in so many guys and said, open their eyes to, wow, Auburn can, can be a big school that you can play at, which I mean, I I think kind of the big picture of this all, especially around national signing day, there's a a extreme optimism and hope for the future that we're getting back on track. We had a couple rough years, a couple rough seasons, but we're headed back to what I think most Auburn fans expect, which is, Every few years, competing for a national championship, bringing in top 10 recruiting classes, which goodness knows, if, like you said, if we're kind of in that 16 to 20 range in most recruiting ranks right now, what, what who's to say that you know we can get into the top 10 next year? I think well, it's possible. Yeah, it is. And, you know, if everybody that reports is accurate, uh, Tony Mitchell at 12 a.m. had told several um, – moderators on certain uh, Auburn message boards that he was committing to Auburn. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it wasn't just like, oh, we hope this happens. Like, he was like, all right, guys, I'm committing to Auburn. And, um, you know, y'all can get your story ready. And at 2 a.m., that changes. So, if we land him, if we land Isaiah Jada, who decommitted from South Carolina, silently committed to us, but got an offer from Dion in Colorado that right before – signing day and he went and visited and signed with them if we get those two guys which we thought we had yeah um you know what i'm saying like you're a whole different i mean you're you're probably talking like top 12 class that's insane so and i'm and and ifs and buts right i mean you can do that all the time but the reality is like this and and we got flips from other teams i'm not mad at these kids but like we were that close that's how close we were right it was actually in the bag and yeah you know kids change their mind and that's okay um, but yeah, it's, but we got, you know, with, uh, killed. So Tony Mitchell would have been nice just to prove, Hey, we flipped one from Bama, but I think the Kai and Lee kid from Ohio state and Keldrick fault were, were two, were bigger gets. I think those dudes were, um, immediate starters. And I think that, uh, Keldrick fault for sure, because of a position of need mm-hmm. and he's just a big dude. Now he's got to put on some weight a little bit, but he's just a big person, like right. a tall guy, very athletic. So, yeah. Well, and- that that was the one it was making waves, and, and I still think is going to make waves. Uh, I mean, think about some of these guys, and, and we can start kind of going through them. We've mentioned a few, but I think the top one in my mind that can make a big impact is Keldrick Falk because he was somebody that a lot of schools wanted. And not only that, but can he make an impact immediately? I think most people are going to say yes, just because – we lost a lot of guys at edge and defensive line. It's tough. And, and I, I think we did a pretty good job uh, just kind of going through this list. I mean, it looks like three, four guys that were defensive linemen that we got on this. Uh, actually, five that we got, um, including a JUCO transfer. So, I mean, we saw the need and we started to address the need, which, man, how how refreshing is it that we saw the need, you know, defensive line, we were going to get thin on it this year, and we addressed it. How amazing is that? Yeah, I mean, I, I, you can't fault Hugh Freeze and them for effort. I mean, they are trying to win on the line. 
I mean, the O line is. We've already recruited more O linemen, I think, than than Harson did. And, mm-hmm. You know, let's be honest. Towards the end of Gus's career, we didn't get a lot either. So true. Um, I like this needs to be a normal thing. It's not for Auburn. Uh, you know, you need to be getting five guys a class, right? I mean, because you just don't know who's going to pan out. Yeah. Um, and we got some, you know, highly touted. We got the number one Juco. We got, um, you know, we almost had the number two Juco. That was Jada. And you don't know how these guys are going to pan out, but that's an offensive tackle, AJ. When's the last time we hmm. talked about offensive tackles? We got two. We wow. We got two offensive tackles. I think the guy from Texas Tech's an offensive tackle, um, or the guy that was recruited to them. So I could be off on that, but I know we got two two tackles. We don't have many. The only thing we missed out on, oh, I forgot. I was talking about our class. So uh, Brent Smith or King, I don't know. He was from Arizona State. He also apparently had even already filled out his financial paperwork at Auburn, and his mom's from Nebraska. Went to Nebraska and at the last minute flipped to them. So that that mm-hmm. would have been a that would have been another guy coming in. Wow. So. You know, and it happens. We we flipped other kids. I'm not mad, but it's just we were that that close to three other guys that could have probably made immediate impacts. Absolutely. And, you know, that, that would have bumped our recruiting class up pretty significantly just because those those were some highly touted guys. Um, let's call, talk through a couple more of our uh, players that we ended up getting. Uh, Clay Whedon, defensive lineman, four-star. Uh, he is the – top 28 interior lineman in this class very talented i think could potentially also be a guy um that maybe not get full-time starting position at defensive line but get pretty close get some good playing time this year i mean he is six foot six almost 300 pounds i i would love that i mean i've also read he could potentially play offensive tackle i don't know we'll see um if you could make the switch from playing defensive line to uh switching over to offense but that, that's kind of exciting that he has that first vers- versatility uh steven johnson uh he is a three-star defensive lineman uh six foot four three 320 pounds big guy uh, anytime you see a defensive lineman over 300 pounds it just it gets me excited because th- those boys yeah, they're strong they're big um and, and you got to think that as soon as they get over here, they're probably going to lean him up a little bit. He's not going to be 320 pounds probably when we start him. Unless that's, I guess, I guess you could convert a lot of that fat into muscle, but I still think he's probably going to lose a little bit of weight there. Um, we also got Brayden Joyner, offensive lineman, uh, three-star interior offensive lineman, which again, man, so good to see an offensive lineman. Uh, Sylvester Smith, uh, kind of a safety defensive back player, uh, he is five foot 11. I, I'm really high on him. I think he's going to be a great, uh, pickup for this. I mean, we, one of our other needs was we're probably losing. It's not official, but I think we're going to lose a little bit more of our secondary to the NFL. Um, and we got to pick that up. So I think Sylvester Smith, uh, kind of in that safety position, uh, could be, a, if anything, a good depth piece there. Uh, we also got Casey Hart. He is a defensive back, three-star out of Low Chipoka, which, hey, awesome. Glad the, the coaching staff looked at somebody who is local right around Auburn. And, uh, I mean, just, just think about three stars. I mean, I feel like Auburn has been able to convert lots of three-star defensive backs into top-caliber NFL secondary players. And I think that <clears> – <throat> It's got to be a huge selling point for J.C. Hart saying, hey, I'm a three-star. I, I think just will give us give me a little bit of development. And, you know, three, four years down the road, he could be one of those that uh, gets picked up in the NFL draft. Yeah, he got a late offer from USC. Mm-hmm. From, yeah, so he, uh, he tweeted about that. Locally, it was <laughs> too late to – uh, it was in the dead period essentially, so they couldn't they couldn't visit. He couldn't go visit there. They couldn't come visit him. But you know, <coughs> excuse me. I mean, you know, the stars. I don't say this because we're not one and two, right? I mean, if you're one and two every year, you're gonna win games. Um, but also, um, you know, the stars are. There's a lot that goes into it. A lot of nuance. He's from Lo I don't. Even, is that a big high school? I mean, it, it, they put a lot plays into like essentially if you're at a, you know, if you're down in Valdosta. 
you know, Lowndes County and Georgia, that's a big football area high school. Like, if you're succeeding there, you're going to be a bigger star. You're going to get more stars by your name versus being at a smaller high school. So um, you don't want to have an entire team full of three stars, but there's no doubt that a three star can wind up being successful. I mean, we've done it multiple times. Right. Jarquez Hunter was a three star probably because he was also, it was like during COVID, people couldn't go see players as much. And I think he was at a small Mississippi school. Mm-hmm. I mean, Jarquez Hunter is a four star running back. I mean, this right. is pretty obvious. Yes, so, very obvious. Yeah. So that's, you know, you don't, again, the more five stars you have, statistics say you're going to win more championships. But yeah, um, do not do not get mad about three star kids. Definitely not. Uh, we also got Darren Reed. He's def- four-star defensive lineman. He was one of the highest rated commits uh, for this class. Uh, he was in the top 200 of this class overall. He was an LSU flip, wasn't he? Uh, yes, he was. And, and pretty cool thing about that, that was under Cadillac when he was the interim head coach. That was when he flipped. So, you know, I know Hugh Freeze gave, you know, Cadillac and Zach Etheridge and the co- other coaches that have been big parts of the recruiting even before Hugh Freeze got here. But that is one that you got to think, wow, thank you. Thank you, Cadillac, for you know bringing him in. We also had Tyler Johnson. Uh, this was a, an offensive tackle. I mean, wow, just I love it. I mean, to, to bring in somebody out of high school, may not get to play this year, but you never know. We, we definitely need a tackle. So he could be one of those guys uh, very early on. I think that offensive line coach you went hired is a stud. I mean, he's just immediately making connections with players and landing them. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, th- I think his two best – I know we're going to talk hires later, but probably the two best hires were obviously keeping Cadillac and Zach, but um, that offensive line coach and then probably the uh, Philip Montgomery, the uh, the OC. But oh, anyways, yeah. that yeah, I think that offensive line, he's a young – he's an aggressive kid guy on the recruiting trail. I think that's going to be a really – we're going to look back and say hey, what a good hire that was. Oh, no doubt. No doubt at all. Um, we also had Connor Liu, uh, who was also a three-star offensive lineman. Great to see that. Um, and then we also got another guy uh, out of Loach Boca. Um, he's another defensive back. So you got to think, another three-star, they see something. Um, you know, Also staying local. Uh, I think that plays, plays well. But J.C. Hart, one of the cool things about him, uh, he's a little bit bigger of a defensive back. He's a uh, six foot two. Um, he's only 175 pounds, so probably going to add some weight onto him a little bit. But his length is something that you really look for. I mean, if he adds That's on some Carlton weight, Davis size, isn't it? Exactly. Well, he, kind of a, he was he like, was six, like six, six foot plus. Six, yeah, six foot six foot one, kind of that range. So, I mean, he's proven. You know, Carlton Davis in the NFL still playing. Still getting pick sixes and interceptions, and I'm sure that was also pitched to J.C. Hart that hey, we can turn some some guys just like you into NFL prospects. Um, we also had Connor Law or Connor Lou, um, and, and we've already talked a little bit about him, offensive lineman, center. Uh, he was our I think it was our our fifth guy at offensive line to get drafted or yep yeah, drafted. <laughs> Sign with Auburn, and uh, that is the most offensive lineman in a class since 2015. So that puts you puts in perspective. Not that we've needed five every year, but we sat down and said we are going to get offensive linemen, and by goodness, did we? So love to see that. Um, and he was also a flip from Miami, so you know he was getting highly recruited from Miami. Um, Hank Brown, he's a quarterback, three star. Um, he originally committed to Freeze uh, while he was at Liberty, um, and then when Freeze made the move over to Auburn, uh, Hank Brown liked Freeze enough and decided to follow he, uh, Hugh Freeze on over. Um, uh, in Hugh Freeze's press conference, it was kind of uh, kind of a little kind of interesting how you know Hugh Freeze looks at quarterbacks because. Yeah, he he touts himself as a really good quarterback developer. One of the things he mentioned when he was talking about Hank Brown was he likes Hank Brown because he can make all of the passes that you need to, which I think is pretty awesome for for a three star. But also that just shows me you know some extra depth in there. Um, not 
I, I'm not saying I don't think he's probably going to be the starting quarterback for sure. Not this year, but maybe not even next year, but it's always good to have kind of your backup because we saw what happened last year where we had to go to essentially play what three quarterbacks last year. So you never know uh, with injuries that, that happened during the football season. Uh, we also had Terrence love. He was a four star safety. Uh, he was one of the top ranked recruits in this class as well. Uh, six foot three, very tall for a safety, uh, just a little under 200 pounds. Uh, you love to see a bigger guy in that position, um, especially a guy that can hit. So looking forward to getting some, man, I, I was a defensive back in high school. I love seeing uh, these safeties come in and they're just ready to come at it, I'm sure. We also had Colton Hood. Uh, he was a three-star cornerback. Um, pretty cool story about him. He had uh, four family members play at Auburn uh, in the past. And so he was wanting to come to Auburn. And I think wasn't this right, Jared, that I don't even think Harson gave him an offer. Nope. And and he you're didn't. like, are you kidding me? Like that, I, I get it. Maybe if it doesn't fit with your program or maybe the player isn't interested, but it's very obvious Colton Hood wanted to come play for Auburn. Well, it's not like we had too many players, right? Right, right. <laughs> no, we need to hold on to this roster spot. Like, we have a ton of options. You could have right. offered the kid, and yeah, anyway. Well, well, even right now, I think we have, I've heard anywhere from like 12 to 15 spots still open on the roster. So that's plenty of room for more transfers, which again shows me we had plenty of room to go and offer Colton Hood yeah. a position. Yeah. We did. Uh, we also got Brenton Williams. He was a three-star edge, which, again, edge positions, we very much need them right now. So uh, picked up him as well as uh, Kendrick Falk. And, uh, I mean, I think both of those guys are going to be menaces going forward. Um, Brenton's out of Opelika, so I know a lot of local Auburn Opelika people um, are very familiar with him. And uh, I'm sure they're very excited that uh, he's coming and staying, staying local. Uh, there was also Wilkie Denard, a defensive lineman, four-star. Uh, I heard the word blue chip player for him uh, multiple times. And you just got to love that out of defensive linemen. Um, I mean, especially a defensive line, you are, you're, you're having to make things happen. <laughs> you're having to stuff all, you're having to stop running backs. You're having to, get to the quarterback. If you have blue chip kind of mentality where you're working hard for every single thing, you're going to be successful and it's just a matter of time. So you got to think a three star right now, by the end, if he keeps putting in that hard work and has that mentality going on in through Auburn, he, he's going to be a much, he's going to get better and better as he goes. Uh, Kendrick Falk, uh, defensive end, uh, four star uh, he was the, and this is the big one, you know, 81st ranked player in the country. Uh, he flipped from FSU. Uh, we've already talked a lot about him, but I, I think it's worth revisiting again. I mean, Jared, how do you, how do you think he can make an impact even game one in this 2023 season coming up? <clears throat> um, uh, you know, I think he's going to have to play out of necessity, um, which probably isn't great for us, but good for him. Um, yeah. I think, you know, I think he's from the people that keep up with recruiting that I've listened to um, that know more about it than I do. It's he's the real deal. He's the real deal. So, you know, if he had a little more um, muscle on him, uh, then he probably would be even higher rated. He's he's more of a kind of, not lean, lean in the right word, but he's a he's a taller dude. So it's mm -hmm. you know you gotta have you gotta be able to withstand an offensive line. Uh, in the SEC, so he's got to put a little weight on him. But uh, if he can do that and keep his speed and quickness, and yeah, he's he's going to be the real thing, man. Yeah, super excited about Kendrick Falk. Uh, we also got a Xavier Miller offensive tackle again. Love to see it. Uh, he's a JUCO offensive tackle, so he's already got some experience. And you got to think that coming into uh, Auburn, he's he's probably going to get at least a shot at a starting position. Uh, being that, I mean, even Ole Miss was recruiting him um, and he flipped from Ole Miss. So pretty cool to see that. Um, yeah. You just got to think that the guys that have the experience, especially on offensive line at that next level, which he does will 
will make that transition a little bit easier than even some of these high school players. Um, Kayan Lee, uh, he is a cornerback, four-star, uh, just a little under six foot, 185 pounds. He was rate, uh, rated as the number 25 cornerback out of the country. So he's a big name that I think a lot of people um, we're, we're definitely going after. And both Zach Etheridge and uh, you know Crime Dog McGriff, he was after getting Kay and Lee. So uh, super glad we got him. I mean, Ohio State was after him, if that tells you anything. Um, and Auburn ended up getting him. So love to see that. Uh, we also got uh, Sori. I'm not even going to try to Dequavius. <laughs> oh, that's not as bad as I thought. I'm just you looking did, at you his did name. Pretty good. <laughs> I, I hope I didn't completely butcher it. Um, he is our sole wide receiver that we got in this uh, draft. Or not draft. Why do I keep saying draft? <laughs> in this signing class. Uh, and uh, I I don't think, I mean, Jared, do you think we needed more wide receivers? Um. Yeah, I mean, depth wise, no, we have plenty. But talent wise, I don't know. Okay. I mean, you know, it doesn't. Like I said, we don't. We have one to give. I mean, we have plenty of scholarships to give, so it wasn't a bad thing to take one. But yeah, I don't. You know, I think that we had three that came in last recruiting cycle that played a lot this year, and if they go on to be really good, then yeah, we're set for two more years without a doubt. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, all in all. I don't think that was the most pressing need. Yeah, no, I don't think it was. And, and I mean, we have a lot of freshmen and sophomores that have gotten some playing time already this last season. So I, I don't think we're going to need a ton of wide receivers, but I, I think we'll probably still go after at least one or two in kind of the transfer portal, um, which I think will be open for at least a two, three more weeks, something like that. Um, I, I, I'm honestly very pleased. I mean, I think this kind of shows – that we made the right choice. I mean, you're, you're looking back at, you know, what Harson did and saying, wow, we were in a very bad position in recruiting. Hugh Freeze comes in, picks that up um, with the assistance of, uh, you know, Cadillac as the interim and then the rest of the staff. And, and you're kind of also looking across back at Ole Miss with Lane Kiffin because Auburn was very close to getting Lane Kiffin. And Lane Kiffin, as you can, you, you probably heard, did not do very well on National Signing Day. He was, uh, I think most of them were around 36 to 40, kind of that range for recruiting class. That's not great. In no. the SEC, that is losing on a lot of talent. Because, well, even, even, because even Auburn, where we're at at 19 or 20, kind of in that range, we're like ninth in the SEC in recruiting. <laughs> like that kind of shows you. SEC is getting the t- the cream of the crop when it comes to recruiting. Well, not only that, like Ole Miss has come off, you know, two years ago their best, more possibly their second best season ever, mm-hmm. and, and this year, you know, they were they were the hot commodity for a while, you know, fighting for the West. Yep. I know they fizzled in the end, but I mean, it's not like they're they're not going through coaching changes. You know, they're supposedly on the rise, and mm-hmm. you know, to only get that many kids. And I also, I could be wrong, but I think they're, I think they're one of the top programs and lost players in the transfer portal. Yeah, they are. Uh, <clears throat> so, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not trying to knock them at all or whatnot, but it, it is interesting. Well, I'm trying to knock them. I'm, yeah. I don't care. <laughs> well, I mean, I will say they're, I mean, having seen interactions with their fans during that Lane Kiffin saga. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I hope we beat them every year. I mean, they, they, their fans have a mentality of, that they are uh, a better program than Auburn. Yeah. Uh, without facts, I don't mind somebody being a better program than Auburn. I mean, right. if a Georgia fan says that, yes, you are. Um, but, but there's facts to back that up. Yeah. Uh, there are not facts to back up the old Miss one. Um, no. There's actually reverse facts to say not. So. <laughs> yeah. It. it uh, yeah. So I actually, um, I hope we run the score up in that game. If if we have that chance, I hope we do it. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and you know. If you look at even, I mean, the the coaching hire of Lane Kiffin versus Hugh Freeze, you know, Hugh Freeze, ever since Harson was fired, has, has been 0-4. And, and Lane Kiffin in that kind of time frame also got an extension, you know, $9 million a year deal, and now is a top 10 paid coach in the country. And he's losing, you know, the last four of the five games in a season. And you're like, wow, 
this the, the he he's going in the wrong direction right now. Now it's not to say you know before next season he can get things turned around, but for a top ten paid coach, you'd expect more out of that, especially recruiting wise. I would at least. <laughs> if you're yeah. a top ten rec- paid coach, you should get top ten recruiting classes. Yeah, I got a buddy who's uh, an old, a big Ole Miss fan and used to play for them actually, and he he posted on Facebook like nine point five. That's all he posted. And he meant the money he's getting. And so they started oh chatting gosh. and somebody, he like he was angry. Yeah. It, they started chatting and somebody said, well, you know, I think he's getting things figured out and yada, yada. And my buddy had a great point. He said, at $9.5 million, you're supposed to already have it figured out. Like $9.5 yep. million is what you pay a coach that already has it all figured out. Right. Um. Yeah. So I think their fans are, they went very quickly from, I hope we don't lose Lane to Auburn to kind of wish we'd have lost Lane to Auburn. Like yeah, I've seen those posts. So. Yeah, I had a good uh, friend who went to Ole Miss. His parents still live in Oxford. Same thing. And you're you're thinking, wow, they 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 have really turned on him. And it kind of reminds me a little bit of, you know, in 2017, Gus got the extension, and, and probably rightfully so. He just had beaten Bama and Georgia, and then very soon after that, got the raise. And you're like, wow, okay, 2018 happens. <laughs> Not a great season. And I think that's kind of where Lane Kiffin is at right now. He got the extension, not a, you know, the fans are turned on him. And I don't, I mean, we've seen it at Auburn. It's very hard to get the fans back once, once you've lost them. So who knows what's, what's going to happen with Lane at Ole Miss, unless they somehow make another run at, you know, at the SEC West or, you know, even more like the playoffs. I mean, people forget that Lane, Pretty handily got beat by Harson <laughs> at mm-hmm. Auburn. Yes, um, that first it, with in their best season in a very long time. Mm-hmm. Um, True. So I mean, there's. I said all along, like I think Lane was the best guy, but you know, at the moment, but really it was more about a sign of Auburn. They went and got who they wanted. That's why I wanted yeah. Lane. It was more like, hey, I want that, mm-hmm. and we have the ability to go get it. Right. Um, I didn't necessarily think that there weren't better options out there i just thought hey we can go get what we want yeah and that would be a good sign so yeah well and and i i think it's you know little bit by little bit you know we're seeing that hugh freeze is a better fit for auburn at least in this point of where we're at because i i think lane kiffin would have just come in and been like i'm gonna run my offense and my offense is awesome i'm gonna recruit how i want to which isn't that much and we're gonna go attack the transfer portal which that could be helpful, but sustainably that's not the best way. If you want to win championships, that's not how you're going to win it. No, so, you're not going to win championships. You're not going to win championships in the portal. Uh, USC almost got there with the portal, but you can. You, they didn't have a defense. You got to have depth. You got to have mm-hmm. players. You got to have high school recruits. Um, and if you take away Hugh Freeze's, you know, pass the 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 bad side of it, Hugh Freeze is absolutely a better fit for Auburn. I mean, he's. He's going to dive in fully into all the traditions. He's going to kiss all the babies, shake all the hands. <laughs> He's going to do it all. Um, yeah. And he also wants to prove people wrong. So yeah. any big job he got, he was going to go in. But I think he actually – I think his daughter actually goes to Auburn. I think he ha- has <clears throat> an affinity for Auburn. I think he likes it. Yeah. I don't think he will leave ever if he's successful unless it's for, like, the pros. Yeah. So, I mean, I think if this works – this is a really you I'm not if anybody's mad I'm not saying that you freeze pass doesn't matter okay I get that but from a football perspective of what this means if this works it could work for a really long time right That's how, because I don't think you would go anywhere right well and I, I I'm kind of thinking you know there I feel like there's some definite comparisons and I know people have already made it so but it's to Bruce Pearl you know he came in had some bad <clears throat> pass you know it's and he freezes had his past, but he's moving forward. He's had success in the past, but he's moving forward and saying, I made the mistakes. I am not going to do those again. And I think Hugh is set up pretty similarly. You know, he's, he's got a similar marketing mentality, kind of like Bruce Pearl and loves Auburn. You can tell it he's genuine about it. Um, and, and not to mention that he's, he's already starting to, you know, start to say the right, you know, Auburn things. Oh, you know, 
we're, we're playing hard, you know, the, the, we're doing the, the right things, you know, that's good and all like, but you also have to keep in mind, like, what's the product on the field, you know, and that won't come until the season. And even the first season, we not may not see as much success as we're hoping, but it's his first year. And I think we, we can all kind of, uh, you know, clearly see we're in a not as great of a situation after the last couple of years as we'd like to be, especially with the players that we've got on. And that's not to say that these this new cl- signing class can change that. It's just the the ones that we've already had haven't kind of panned out. And maybe that's coaching. And I think that a lot of it kind of showed when Cadillac came, it was coaching. <laughs> and so that, that got me very hopeful that uh, going forward that these players are going to be really – playing hard for a guy who genuinely cares for him and and I, I just i remember back to Hugh Freeze's kind of opening press conference he said i want to win over the guy's hearts and that just showed me he understands it's not just about the x's and o's of football it's about the minds and the hearts of those players and their families and he's gonna try to win them over and i think that's when you genuinely get excited because you're like wow he, he gets it it's bigger than football it's bigger than just a player. It's it's their family. It's that's that's the thing. That's he, that's what he's going. For. So, any other final thoughts, Jared? Before we get out of here about the National Signing Day? No, sir. I think we've pretty much covered it all. Yeah. And uh, how can the people stay in touch with you? You can find me on Facebook under my name Jared Davis. And uh, you can find me on Twitter a j a y j a y underscore. It's always great to be an Auburn Tiger and War Eagle. War Eagle. Thank you for tuning in today's episode on the E2C Network. On your way out, I want to remind you to stop by E2Cnetwork.com. It's your one-stop shop for all our content across our podcast, YouTube channel, and much more. To stay up to date with us, make sure you're following social media accounts such as Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. While our content here may always be Auburn sports heavy, if it's orange and blue, it's what we do. War Eagle.